Hi, my name is John Wheeler, and I'm here today to speak to you about a very important topic for everyone in the risk, audit, and compliance fields. And what I'd like to share with you is how to create a better understanding of digital risk and greater visibility and how chief information security officers can help. Before I dive into our discussion today, I'd like to give you a brief introduction. And I'm currently the founder and CEO of Wheelhouse Advisors. And what we do at Wheelhouse is advise senior executives on how they can integrate risk management and cybersecurity using new approaches, new strategies, and technologies. I have over 30 years of experience in the field, and most recently, I worked for 10 years at Gartner as their lead integrated risk management analyst. I've also had experience in a variety of roles at the senior executive level, including financial services and healthcare industries. So let's take a look at today's agenda, and it's fairly straightforward. What I'd like to share with you first is how the new digital business landscape has changed in 2022, and it's changed a great deal. And how does digital risk play into that landscape, and what do we see coming in the years ahead, especially as we move into post-pandemic era in 2023 and beyond? Third, I'd like to offer up a new way or approach to managing risk that you may not be aware of called integrated risk management and how an integrated risk management approach can help you better discover this digital risk that is of growing importance today, especially at the senior executive and board levels. And then finally, I'd like to offer up to you a reason why IRM technology is better suited for digital risk in relation to some of the technologies that have been in place for a while, in particular, legacy GRC technologies. So with that agenda in mind, let's start out by talking about digital business and how it's creating new risk, especially as we've moved further from the crisis management focus in the global pandemic. What we've found over the last couple of years is that many organizations accelerated their investment in digital technologies, digital products and services and processes as a way to mitigate the risk involved with reaching out to their consumers in non-physical ways. So they've looked to virtual means to engage with them and found that in many cases, these virtual means of reaching customers through digital products and services is a great way for them to move forward. And there's a lot of growth in the area of reaching customers that may not have been easily reached before the pandemic or even enter into new markets. And so a couple of various reports that I wanted to highlight for you here, emphasize just how big a digital business opportunity in, in the market is. And the first one up here in the upper left-hand corner, I think says it all. In the next two years, by 2024, the World Economic Forum predicts that the digital e-commerce market it will grow by $800 billion in just the next two years. I mean, that's a huge amount in front of many CEOs and senior exec executives that are looking for growth, especially as we're entering into a period of, of economic contraction and possibly even a recession. At the same time though, globally, what we're seeing is an increase in the number of software supply chain incidents, which have a direct impact on these new digital products and services that the senior executives are looking 
for this growth. And so PwC in their digital trust insight survey this year noted that 56% of companies are expecting this sort of increase. And we've already seen it in a host of various software supply chain incidents. And for example, uh, a notable one occurred earlier this year at Toyota. And one of their parts suppliers experienced a ransomware event that led to the shutdown of 18 manufacturing lines and facilities in Japan for over a week. And this represents just a huge impact, not only on their efficiency and, and the cost structure, but also their ability to meet the growing demand as we're working through all of these supply chain issues and, and pin up demand from the pandemic. So a huge business impact. And then when we look at up to the right here, another industry being healthcare, which is an industry that I'm very familiar with, with prior experience, and that 53% of connected medical devices have a known critical vulnerability, a known critical vulnerability. This is not talking about all of the unknown vulnerabilities that exist in these devices. And so when you think about digital business in the healthcare setting and, and what would be a digital service that they are looking to, to extend this growth in the ways that I just mentioned, one of the clear examples to me is the use of telehealth or a virtual patient service. And I think it's a great example of, of what these new digital services represent. And in fact, if I just spend a moment walking through how organizations in the healthcare industry put these telehealth products together, I think you'll get a better understanding and idea of what digital risk really means. And so when, when you think about going to your doctor for a telehealth visit, you think about all the technology devices that are, are coming together in new ways to provide that service. So you have a mobile device, either a, a phone or a tablet that you may use to schedule that appointment, capture critical information on your financial background, insurance, um, also your medical history. And that sort of information is very, um, very risky in terms of um, both regulatory risk and privacy, but also ensuring that the accuracy and the integrity of that data is transferred to that care provider. And so as we saw through the pandemic, many care providers used various video platforms to deliver this service, whether it be a Zoom or other type of uh, more generic video platform. But as they started using these video platforms and, and, and software, they immediately recognized that there were all sorts of privacy and security issues with them. And so when you're sharing this sort of information captured in a mobile device now being discussed over video, it becomes even more important that you secure that in a way that ensures that the data is, is kept private, but also ensure its accuracy and integrity. And then as you move forward, you start to think about other areas of technology that are going to augment this service. There may be use of AI or machine learning either before the visit during or after to help better diagnose the patient's condition. There may be use of um, devices in the home that will be connected into this sort of service for patient monitoring, gathering data prior to the appointment, or even administering therapeutics post-appointment. And then not only to men mention the use of third-party application providers or even cloud service providers, who are responsible for much of this data and much of the information that is being used for processing that patient information. So when you combine all this together, not only do you have the risk that comes along with it, but you have a broader set of risks and maybe even some unintended consequences that might result. And in a case that I experienced, I think this will point out a, a great example of unintended consequence of digital services. And that is the fact that early in the pandemic, 
many care providers were able to provide their services across state lines here in the US. But that waiver expired after the crisis started to wane. And so now providers have the responsibility to ensure that their patients, even though they are being seen virtually, are physically within that state uh, of licensure for that care provider. And so in my case, I was um, actually up in North Carolina. I'm based here in Atlanta, Georgia. And in North Carolina, I was 12 miles uh, across the state line, but needed a primary care visit just for a checkup. And the only control that the care provider at that point had was simply asking me if I was in the state of Georgia during that visit. Of course, I um, I told a white lie, said I was, because I really needed that patient care visit. And um, thankfully, it was a very routine visit and didn't result in any sort of complication. But it could have represented an instance where if it had been a misdiagnosis by that physician, it could have resulted in some form of malpractice, rendering that physician or care providers insurance invalid and representing a huge cost to the overall healthcare organization, not to mention the situation for that care provider and their licensure. So huge risks are emanating from this new, new design around digital products and services to reach into the virtual world. And that's why finally, you'll see here, based on a Gartner 2022 survey of board of directors, digital is the number one priority in their mind, not only from a growth perspective, but also from a risk perspective. And to dig a little bit deeper into that same survey, I'd like to share here with you a better uh, view of what those top priorities are actually representative of. And you'll see at the very top, You've got digital, as was mentioned, but it's combined with two others that are highly interconnected. And that is represented by the workforce challenges that organizations are facing as we move beyond the pandemic, either with retaining folks within the workforce, training them in the new digital skills that are required, or even hiring qualified candidates. And then coupled with the fact that we have an increased focus on not only health and, um, and safety as a result of the pandemic, but sustainability, environmental challenges, climate change, but also social challenges that we addressed through the pandemic around various social platforms and the use of uh, individuals' data. And then coupled with the need for stronger governance at the very top, coming out of the board of directors and into the senior executive suite. So those three combined represent a major challenge for board of directors and board members today. But you also notice if you look just a little bit further down the list, beyond growth and financial concerns is risk management. And the reason risk management is so high on this list, is I think it's, really twofold. One, the board understands that their fiduciary duties are being scrutinized in ways that they haven't seen in the past. And so they're on the line as the primary risk overseer of organizations in order to ensure that these new risks are addressed in the right way. And then simultaneously, executives, senior executives are being pushed by these boards of directors to strengthen their risk management programs to give them the right information to make those key decisions and ask the right questions to ensure that organizations are moving forward safely, and in particular in the digital realm. And so what senior executives are doing to help mitigate that risk and at the same time optimize or even maximize the profit around these new digital products and services is they're shifting the budget 
control away from a centralized IT organization into the front lines, into the business itself. And so this is from that same Gartner survey. And you'll see that these changes in capital allocation and investment to accommodate these new digital investments is rapidly moving to those new, um, new areas of control. And especially in global enterprises um, that have a more complex risk profile. And so as senior executives look to the business more, they need to have a better understanding of digital risk and also ensure that business leaders have a better understanding of digital risk and what it really means. So what does digital risk really mean? Well, when you think about it, you know, I, and I'm asked this all the time, you know, digital risk could mean, in many people's view, that it's strictly technology-based, or even in many instances, I have a lot of people will ask me, what's the difference between digital risk and cyber risk? Well, digital risk lies at the heart of these new digital processes, products, and services. And it results from those unique combinations of technology assets, processes, strategic objectives, driving at the core of the business and the desire to reach a positive business outcome. And so it's combining not only cyber risk, which is really just that broader environmental risk in a technology realm that is impacting the organization through multitudes of threats, combined with vulnerabilities within various software or hardware, but also how those, those cyber risks impact the ongoing operation of these new digital products and services. And it, it could be a direct impact or indirect, but those impacts are just one of the many, as you see here to the right, of risks that can occur when you start combining technology in the virtual realm with processes and people in the physical realm. And so when you think about this, even a little bit more broadly, in 2022, this digital risk permeates truly all the risk imperatives that we're faced with today. And so I, I offer up these four here and there are four S's if you will, to help you remember, but they, they span the boundaries of business risk that organizations are currently struggling with. And certainly on the left-hand side here, sustainability is in play around ESG risk and performance because of all the investment that is being made into companies who are better at managing their climate, social governance risks in demonstrated ways. And so you see over 90% of Fortune 500 companies are issuing some sort of corporate annual ESG report to bolster that investment, but also prove to their customers that they are of the same mindset that these consumers and customers might be looking for when looking to a company for making a either a, a purchase decision or continuing their ongoing business with a given corporation. And so not only that, customers and others, especially as it relates to third parties or suppliers, are certainly focused on business resilience and the soundness of the organization. At the same time, uh, folks at the board level, say within the audit committee, are certainly focused on safety concerns, not only safety to individual employees, but also safety to their own companies. And then finally, from a security standpoint, we have all sorts of new proposed rules and regulations coming about as it relates to IT in particular around data or cybersecurity in the form of requiring companies to disclose 
expertise at the board level in cybersecurity, but also um, disclose when they have a major cyber event, such as the proposed um, rules that have come out from the SEC and are still under comment and consideration. So you think about all of these risks coming together in the form of digital and how can you get your arms around it? Well, one way that I think is highly effective is by combining views of risk across a couple of different realms. And the first being, of course, technology and cyber risk, representing that broader environmental risk that I talked about as it relates to various process, uh, policies and controls that are in place or are needed across the wide variety of technology assets, software, hardware, data, and then spanning into the broader business operation and how does technology enable those business processes and what sort of standards or metrics are being used to monitor the risk in the operational realm. And then finally, you'll find in many organizations a view at the strategic level of enterprise risk, where risk appetite statements are developed at the senior executive board level to clearly articulate the level of risk that the organization is willing to take in their pursuit of the desired outcomes that they're looking to achieve. And so you have these three views and in many organizations, while they're very clear for individuals as they look at these three individually, what is not clear is how they relate to one another and how they link together. And that's where integrated risk management comes into play. And so when you think about integrated risk management and the various um, risk areas that come to bear, what I have here is how those risk imperatives that I mentioned or the four S's relate into uh, four key objectives that every organization has, whether it be a focus on their performance, being financial or even non-financial, resilience, their ability to certainly recover from a major risk event, assurance, their ability to identify and assess the right risks and address them in the right way, and then certainly compliance, making sure that their organization is focused on the right requirements that are relevant to the organization at large. And it's across that same spectrum from left to right, technology, cyber, operational, strategic enterprise risk. And as it relates to two key drivers of risk, the products and the services that the organization creates and the policies and procedures that the organization use, uses to mitigate the risk appropriately. And then as a backdrop, you consider how these various risks that you see in um, represented here in the various dots that I have. So for example, in the upper right-hand corner, ESG, digital risk that we're talking about, vendor third-party risk, these are important for 2022. But who is really focused on these risks and do they have an understanding of how they connect to other risks in this chart? And so what you see around here are the various business leaders that definitely have a biased view based on their role in the organization of the risks that they see, but desperately need a better understanding of the risks that may lie within another leader's domain. And so you consider the CISO, for example, uh, down in the lower left-hand corner, what they need is to better understand, say the CFO on the very far um, opposite side of the chart, the CFO's view of risk and why they're so focused on ESG. Um, the CISO might not readily see that it's driving a huge amount of investment to the organization and not understand how technology fits into that ESG risk and in, in, in its overall performance. So it's so very important at this stage of the game for organizations to connect the dots. And at the, at the senior executive level, 
but also connect the dots in ways that they understand how their role can help another business leader's role. So finally, I wanted to get into just a brief discussion of where you might wanna to look to help you develop this integrated risk management approach. And I know a lot of you are very familiar with legacy GRC technology solutions and, and what they represent. What I've done here is, is pulled um, some information from Gartner on how the two compare. And basically um, to boil it down for you, what we've seen is a move away from the more monolithic approach to managing risk or compliance, uh, which legacy GRC really focuses on, to more of an ecosystem approach, understanding that not only are the risks connected within the organization itself, but even more importantly, more organizations are working externally with outsourcers, offshores, um, suppliers, strategic partners, looking to others to do a large part of, of delivering that new product or service in digital form than the folks that they have within their own four walls. And so it's very important that you have that broad focus that IRM provides. And so just drilling into it very briefly as I, I wrap up here, I'd like to point out that IRM from a technology perspective supports this real-time view of digital risk. And the way it does it is by ensuring there is a view of all three risk areas, technology, operational, strategic, that links directly into the strategic business outcomes, the processes as they are deemed critical within the organization, and then the technology assets as they enable those. And it's across five critical capabilities that if you look here at this next slide, give you a better understanding of the functions and the features that you might wanna consider as you look at IRM technology solutions. And one that is, very critical for digital risk, both today and moving forward, is right in the center, and that's risk quantification and analytics. And that's an area of growing need for organizations, but also an area of, I would say, evolving development by the IRM technology providers. And where there is ongoing development and where I think it is going to be a great benefit to organization is around scenario analysis and predictive modeling. Giving organizations an ability to scenario out how these new digital products and services may perform and give them the opportunity also to predict what some of those unwanted outcomes might be, such as the healthcare example that I gave earlier. So with that, I just wanted to thank you for your time and attention over this last 30 minutes and really hope that you understand a little bit better what digital risk is all about and how you can better manage this risk through integrated risk management, both approaches and technology. So with that, I'd like to thank you again and wish you the best in your future endeavors. Thank you.